Hello and welcome to this video in which we do a static equilibrium analysis on two stacked blocks. And uh, you can see in the picture here we've got the blocks. Each block weighs 10 kilograms. Each block is 80 centimeters long. And the question that we want to ask is how large can the overhang D be that distance uh, between the top block and the bottom block before the top block tilts and falls off the bottom block or at least starts to slide off. So that's the question we want to ask and the way we'll answer this question is by doing a static analysis. Uh, to make things easier we've assumed that the surface of the blocks and the surface that they're resting on are frictionless. And the reason this makes things easier is that we don't have to think about um, any forces in the horizontal component because the surface that the blocks is resting or that the blocks are resting on can't apply any horizontal forces to the bottom block, and the bottom block can't apply any horizontal forces to the top block. So it just kind of simplifies things. So the first step in this, as is always the case is to build a free body diagram. And so if we look at our situation, um, we will have the weight of the top block. This is, uh, we're going to build a free body diagram of the top block because that's the block we want to see uh, what happens before it moves. And so I'll draw the weight here in a color that clashes nicely with the orange of the block. And let's see, this is a weight vector. And now I need to also show the normal forces exerted on the top block by the bottom block. Now you'll notice it's tempting at this point to try to figure out how the surface that both blocks are resting on will apply some force to the bottom block, which will in turn apply force to the top block. You don't want to do that. In our case, um, our free body diagram is just the top block, and so we are only interested in forces that are put on the top block, or, or that are applied to the top block from the bottom block. Now, because we're interested in when the block, when the top block begins to rotate, that is when it begins to tilt, um, we can't just put the normal force from the bottom block as a single force upwards. Uh, we really need to split it and uh, the easiest way to do that is to put one component or to put uh, part of the normal force at the right corner of the bottom block. And I'll call this NA and then the other normal force at the left corner of the top block call this NB. Okay, and we have set this up so that NA is applied a distance D from the edge of the block. Okay, and B is applied right at this corner. And again, this allows us to take into account um, the forces involved that will cause the top block to begin to rotate as it um, as it slips. Okay, and so basically again our goal is to figure out how large D can be before it starts to slip. And it turns out that it's fairly straightforward to do this if we just do a static analysis and find out what the um, what NA and NB are what those magnitudes are as a function of D. And once we have that, then there'll be an obvious criterion that we can apply uh, to see um, what uh, those forces can be. So again, uh, there are no forces acting in the X direction because we have frictionless surfaces. So that's not going to give us any useful information. Uh, we can look at the summation of the forces, let's see, the summation of the forces in the y direction, that has to be equal to zero in static equilibrium. And this gives us then that um, NB 
plus n a has to be equal to w and w is 10 kilograms that's the mass times the gravitational constant which is 90 or 9.8 meters per second squared so this gives us 98 newtons okay so that's one equation that relates nb and na okay the next equation that we need to do is we need to uh, uh, use the idea that the sum of moments or the net moment around any point in uh, in our body is zero and so what we'll do is we'll look at the net moment around um, the point B I'll call this B here uh, this is the point where n sub B is applied and it turns out that if we look at the net moment here n sub b is not going to be part of the equation. It will give us something that relates uh, the weight and n sub a. So to do the sum of the moments around b is equal to 0, we have um, the weight w, okay, this is this guy going down, times the moment arm, now you'll remember that this whole distance here is 80 centimeters, which is 0.8 meters. And so the distance here between uh, point or the edge and the center where uh, B is or where the weight is applied is 0.4 meters. Um, the distance here between the edge and where NA is applied this guy is 0.8 meters minus d. Okay, so we have the weight times its moment arm, which is 0.4 meters. And uh, let's see, we have that going in a clockwise direction, so that will be negative, plus an a, which is the force applied upwards and times its moment arm, which is 0.8 meters, minus d, and this is equal to zero. Again, we know this weight is 98 newtons, and so um, we can write this then as uh, n a times 0.8 meters minus d is equal to 98 newtons times 0.4 meters. And I've got a reason for not actually working this out. It turns out that by not working it out right now, we can get a nice expression for NB as well. Or we can then say that NA is equal to 98 newtons times 0.4 meters over 0.8 meters minus d. Okay, and uh, to find out what nb is then, we can take this expression for na, plug it in here, and we'll have um, nb is equal to 98 newtons minus na, which is 98 newtons times 0.4 meters over 0.8 meters minus d. And we can factor out uh, 98 newtons. And then we'll have a 1 minus 0.4 meters over 0.8 minus d. So if I put that over all over a common denominator, I have 8 meters minus d minus 0.4 meters over 0.8 meters minus d. And I can simplify this somewhat. Uh, let's see, where shall we put the final answer? We'll put it up here. nb is equal to uh, 0.4 meters minus d over 0.8 meters minus d. 
and this is times 98 newtons. Okay, so we have an expression for Na. It's 98 newtons times 0.4 meters, and B is 98 newtons times 0.4 meters minus D um, over 0.8 meters minus D. Okay, so how does this tell us then how large D can be before the block starts to tip? Well, the key to seeing that is in this expression for NB. Okay, you can see that as long as D is smaller than or equal to 0.4 meters, so if, uh, here we'll, we'll actually get rid of this stuff because uh, we're not going to look at this again. Okay, so we can say then that if um, D is less than or equal to 0.4 meters, then NB, which is 0.4 meters m minus D over 0.8 meters minus D, if this is true, then NB is greater than or equal to zero, which is good because we want NB NB is the normal force applied by the block below, and we want it to be positive. If D is greater than 0.4 meters, then you can see that NB is less than zero. So if N, for NB to be less than zero, that means that the arrow that we have here would actually be in the wrong direction, which would mean somehow that the bottom block is pulling on this corner the bottom block is somehow pulling on this corner to keep it down. And there's just no way it can do that. Um, this block can't pull the top block. It can push it away, but it can't pull it towards itself. So what this basically tells us then is that D can be anything between 0 and 0.4 meters before the top block will start to tip. Uh, if D is larger than 0.4 meters, then uh, the top block uh, will start to tip and uh, things come apart. This is an intuitively satisfying result. Basically, uh, 0.4 meters is halfway through the, or halfway along the length of the top block. Its center of gravity is here, assuming that it's a uniform uh, density. And so basically what we're saying is as long as the center of gravity of the top block is over the bottom block, the top block won't tip over but as soon as we move it far enough away, or move it far enough that the center of gravity of the top block is not over the bottom block, it starts to tip. So, hopefully this has made good sense to you. Um, again, the purpose of this was to um, well, show you another cool statics problem. So, uh, that's problem.